Forward Base Sawano at Zeno Island by Tactical Cat Illustrated by Zizus Toby and two pieces from Tactical Cat Part 2 Bloody Fate Episode 3 Lieutenant Commander Sten of the Advanced Zone Don't touch the container or breathe the fumes, said an accented, rhythmic voice. His vowels were rounded and deep, his sentences musical and fluid. This was no accident. The mechanics wouldn't be able to handle this even if they had known. The lab-coated presenter walked to the center of the dark lab, where a tall cylinder suspended a green fluid at the bottom. I can tell you what it is, he tapped with a fingernail on the glass, but not how it got there. And then he made a glance across the faces of the captains. Some stood cross-armed, others at attention, but all were engrossed in his report. Heavy faces and intense eyes. Well, Sten, asked Captain Toby to him, remembering that their resident scientist, Lieutenant Commander Sten, tended to a precise and careful speech. It's a heavily corrosive, non-Newtonian, ferromagnetic substance hydrolyzed to exhibit extremely acidic traits, replied Sten. For now, I'm dumbing it the... N-N-F-S-H-T-E-E-A-T, or Green Glue, Green Goo for short. There had been considerable applause in the lab amongst the apprentices when he announced that name, but it seemed like the captains weren't in the mood. The official investigation cleared the mechanics involved. Their cutting job was routine and flawless. The problem was that the Green Goo was eating up the hull of their ship as they were cutting it. It was happily chomping away the whole time they thought the area was safe. There was a sea of hmms and nods in response. This don't add up, opined Thulner to the group. How did a chemical weapon manage to get in here? See no island a secret, and it wasn't anything in the holes when we came in. It ain't like Yuki dragged it in here with us. I watched the Sona heading back myself. She was clean. It wasn't carried on the laser weaponry that so heavily damaged her fleet, replied Sten. There is, as of this moment, no way to embed such an amount of material information into a light wave. Unless they've invented a new weapon system that can fire the stuff, the only way it could have gotten to the ship was as if... He circled around to the front of the container, mysteriously pausing. Someone put it there. Wouldn't surprise me, commented Ken with a bored effect. His mind was too quick for such discussions to stimulate enough neural activity to enrich his learning, so he could always be trusted to have an excellent book under his arm. Most of the men passed him off as an eccentric prodigy, which was not too far from the truth. Who had access to that particular part of the Sonas of Fern, and how they concealed such a dangerous substance long enough to keep it secret is more interesting, he continued. Ever since he had been sworn into command of the coordinate a year ago, and met the other captains, he had dedicated himself to a monitored laconic speech and a year of astute observation to minimize the risk of making mistakes. This self-discipline easily commanded the admiration of his crew, who collectively adopted him as a brother, but it also projected a confidence that masked deeper layers of self-doubt. Captain Ken makes astute observations, confirmed Sten. We've been having considerable difficulty containing this material safely. When we first got the call to look at it, it ate up everything AZ threw at it. He glanced briefly at a sealed glass cylinder of murky dark glass that had been stored on the shelf. The remains of his testing tools in gaseous form after he tried to examine it. We only managed to move it because Seaman Zeno suggested that we exploit its magnetic properties. So I can tell you how to move it temporarily, and we can throw it back at them if you're ever inclined towards long-ranged magnetic NNFSHTEEAT goo-slinging railguns. But keeping it in one place like this... The concoction behind him produced a sizable bubble which plopped to the top. Requires a mucus lining to protect the container and a carefully balanced alkaline solution to neutralize the external layer of the goo itself. We're considering running an electric coil around this to double the security. They spent some time inspecting the goo and discussing its chemical nature. 
under Stinn's expert direction. Lieutenant Commander Stinn was in charge of the Advanced Zone Division, Forward Base Solano's research and development lab. He had his eccentricities and no particular inclination to conceal them, but he was fondly regarded for his incredible breakthroughs in situations like this. His expertise was proving indispensable at the moment. The captains and Stin discussed their options for a while, until at length some obnoxious noise came from the doorway. At, 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 at. <laughs> Yuki turned her head immediately, recognizing the string of trills and nasalized vowels. Ah, uh, continued the squawk at the doorway. <coughs> the captains turned their heads towards a little emperor penguin sitting on the so shoulder of a shadowy, backlit figure. Suddenly, Yuki burst out laughing. It's Adam, she explained to the others. He says, now we know what it's like to have to crawl home with a decrepit chip that might split in half before you make it to dock, she translated his Lunarian speech, and appends, welcome to logistic life where your job is to handle unreasonable demands at unreasonable speeds. The human figure from the doorway who had brought in the penguin let out a hearty laugh in response to the penguin's roast. As he walked closer into the light, the captains began to make out his features. He was average in height, sporting an oversized, cocked, black beret over black short hair. His presence made little statement, unassuming in its discerning silence. His build was athletic but lean, and his jaw was somewhat squared. His eyes scanned observantly. There was no presence on his face of active restraint or cold rationality, unlike some of the younger captains. Rather, there was simply no expression at all. As he took a few steps forward, <clears throat> and the metallic echo of his footfalls decorated the air, it became apparent to the captains followed him that he commanded the utmost respect here at Solano Base. Every one of the captains had turned on a point, stood to devout attention, and saluted. Even the penguin on his shoulder, draped in a sharp purple sash, had lifted a flipper. At ease, men, he said, removing his cover deferentially. Just wanted to listen to Sten's report, too. Habitually, he joined them at the end of their line. So many days they had all stood in a row, single file beside each other, freezing or sweating at attention as a sergeant called away commands during training. Then came the days of the senior officers' lectures, when they had stood on the ship deck in the same order. The shiny color of their insignia in the time they had spent out in the field had changed since then but not even two years had rid them of that ancient, familiar habit. Having all the captains back in one place was the closest anyone could get to being home. Admiral now, nodded Stin to the new figure. Glad you could make it. After meeting Stin at AZ, they had been gathered around the console in the Admiral's office for some time. Up on an elevated platform by the wall was an elongated table screen, holographic projection hovering above it. Kin's intelligence division of the Admiral spent much of their time here, discussing the war front and developing strategies. Today, they had gathered around it to assess the situation facing Sawano Base. What I've heard from Lieutenant Commander Stinn's report, began Admiral Lau, is that Thulner and a few of the mechanics began suspecting sabotage, and Stinn considers it likely based on his analyses. But I haven't heard the briefing from you, Thulner. Thulner stepped forward. Ken and I were at the docks checking up on things. I wanted to see the old team, check how Annie was doing. When I got there, they were in break, so the area was cleared out. Seaman John walked right up under the Sonos of Farron, and then I heard the sound of metal tearing. Now, creak and metal's a familiar sound when you spent a few years with a the thermotorch in hand. I caught it, of course. But when I put it down onto the dock, it started leaving a hole. That's when I had Ken call up AZ. Didn't smell right, didn't look right. Seaman Jane went, took one look and immediately guessed that someone had put it there, since no one had noticed it. Hmm. The Admiral took in Thulner's report. We definitely got a mole around, continued Thulner. 
Could be someone assigned to Sawano base, or someone in one of the fleets. And the Sonos of Varen could have more of the stuff lying about, too. In fact, so could all of the jewels. No one had yet given voice to such a conjecture, but they were too experienced not to have considered it. Given the situation, Thulner wondered if his XLTT was in such horrid shape, thanks in part to Stin's plaything. It's safe to say that we should declare the Sonos of Fern structurally unsafe till checking her up. There was a vacuum of silence. If there's anyone to trust on mechanical recommendations, responded Admiral Now, it's you. Make it happen. For the rest of you, return to your usual duties. We'll update you on the situation as it develops. And be careful. There's no telling what this mo mole can do with tech like this. They nodded and filed out the door. Just before heading out, Yuki addressed the Admiral again. Admiral, it's good to see you well, she offered. He had been out for a few days, and the captains had been away on a mission for weeks, so they hadn't seen each other in some time. You too, Yuki, he replied. I hope the front hasn't been too chaotic. <laughs> Not at all, she dodged. It would be too boring if there weren't any chaos to shoot at. They enjoyed a brief chuckle. Fulner took notice and listened in. After all, Yuki explained, Toby usually gets the work done before I get there, with that pinpoint artillery of his. It's reassuring having the others around. It makes my job easier, too. There was a pensive moment of recollection between them. I'm curious, she brought up then. When Toby and I were at lunch, there was a woman in strange clothing. Very high class, very conspicuous. Do you know if there were any nobles assigned here lately? Admiral now scratched his head and squinted, accessing recent memory. Noble ladies? Not that I've heard of. It would be strange for a noble family to send someone here, of all places. And I'm sure the fleet admiral would have mentioned it. Hmm, I see, she acknowledged. I'll investigate on my own time, then. He nodded. Yuki, before you go, now continued, I think Thulner's right to play it safe. We should quarantine off the Sonaz of Fern until further notice. You might want to head back and get all of your personals before we close it. That makes sense, she acknowledged with a nod. I'll head there now, then. Wait a moment, interjected Thulner, collecting some papers into a folder. I'd like to go, too, see just what shape she's in. Anything falls, I'll back you up. The Admiral vigorously agreed, and they headed out. They had only been gone a few minutes when there was a buzz at the door. Now clicked open the comms from the console. Instant error reporting, sir, came the voice from the other side of the door. Immediately, Now switched the console program to an inconspicuous map of the local area and headed toward the door. It was about darn time. Come in, he said holding the, the door ajar. It had been a few months since Ensign Era had been sent on her mission. It was straightforward, insanely dangerous, and invaluable for his future plans of how to navigate the warfront. Of course, due to the nature of the work, there had been no communication since the mission began, which meant that he had no idea if he would ever get the information he wanted. Era entered and stood to attention. Quietly closing the door, he made his way back to the console. First, well done out there. I'm glad you made it back safely. Something told him she had been enjoying the work, which is why Commander Ervin sent her in the first place. There were few soldiers, even at Sawano Base, who could stay sane for months on end in the enemy's heartland. All those from Sawano Base who could tolerate such an assignment worked in Captain Kin's intelligence division, under Commander Ervin who had managed to put the majority of his team on the other side of the front. Even the Admiral himself had no idea where they were or how they had gotten there. All right, he continued. Let's begin. Aye, sir. Someone was excited. The Admiral shook his head with an amused smirk. He had forgotten how enjoyable it was to discuss anything with Ensign Era. Character and personality were assured in her conversation no matter the topic. It looks like you were right, she began. They've been putting rats, 
in the chain of command for years. And there's one here too at Saw and Base. I have an update on their new tech system too. Now considered the report thoughtfully, as he usually did. Who is it, he clarified, and how many are there? Start with the infiltration. I want to know just how bad it really is.